get some more in there. Call to order this uh, regular meeting of the Spirit Planning Commission for May 1st, 2012. Vote to call the roll, please. Sure. Uh, Chairperson Jen Crickman. Here. Vice Chairperson Craig Christopher. Here. Commissioners Joanne Eaton. Ian Elverson. Here. Nick Holson. Here. Willis Harden here. Bob McCool. Here. Michelle Rittmaster. Tom Ricker. Present. Connor Fred Fox. Here. Um, item three on the agenda tonight is uh, public comment on the consent agenda and non-agenda items. This will be anyone's opportunity to come forth and address the commission on consent agenda or non-agenda items. Seeing none, we will move on to item four, the consent agenda. The only item is the minutes of April 3, 2012. Entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. Make a motion. motion. Commissioner Alverson. Second. And Commissioner Folsom in second. Um, any discussion? No? All in favor? I wasn't. And finished. one abstention, Commissioner Pestasano. Otherwise, uh, otherwise unanimous. <clears throat> All right, moving on. That concludes item four on the agenda. <coughs> item five is uh, a public hearing and recommendation of the Town Nine Park Enhancement Project. And um, we will open the public hearing. It feels fifth proof of publication. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, does the applicant have a presentation? Is that either the town or I guess it's the town, right? I'll, I'll just say a words. Okay. I won't be doing much of the talk. Uh, tonight we have a presentation from Mark Top, who is the uh, superintendent of public works and parks and for the town. Mm -hmm. And uh, he and the uh, Parks Recreation and Open Space Trails Advisory Committee have worked very diligently together to put together a, a plan for uh, improvements to what is known as the Town 9 property, which is south of the marketplace, north of the original Superior. So with that, uh, and the idea is, is that this is a major public improvement, so the Planning Commission uh, is to review this and make a recommendation to the Board of Trustees. So, Martin, uh, you're up. Thank you, Mr. Fox. Uh, again, Martin Toth, town staff. It's great to be here tonight. Um, and as Fred mentioned, it's a, it's a town park, or a town nine facility is a park facility um, just west of here, uh, south of the marketplace for anybody who's not familiar with it. It's the primary uh, recreation facility, really the only park um, of, other than Children's Park in original town. Um, and as most of the folks in this room are aware, this site, this park site, has been the subject of various discussions about how to really improve the park and improve this facility that's been here uh, really since the marketplace opened you know, a little over a decade ago. The town has a Parks, Recreation, Open Space and Trails Advisory Committee, often referred to as ProStat, that has looked at this project over the years as a part of the committee's annual budget process to uh, develop a recommendation for the board. And the committee really started focusing uh, work on this particular project, working with staff, on this latest initiative to put together a recommendation for what to what you'll see tonight as part of this presentation. Uh, a little over maybe two years ago, in, in, during uh, 2010, to look at potential improvements for this site. Last year, as part of the ProStack's annual work plan, the committee coordinated with staff and a consultant team to lead a very thorough community engagement process, which we'll come back to tonight. It's, uh, it'll be the slide that's behind us right now. Uh, the chair of the ProStack, Jim Payne, is here tonight. He'll show a little bit, or share a little bit about how that process went and what was included. Uh, to, to cut ahead to the chase a little bit, the goal of that engagement process was to develop a consensus-based plan for improvements to Town 9 Park, and thanks in large part to many residents of original town who participated in the process by either showing up here in person for meetings or um, leaving feedback on forms that we left out here in Town Hall and the 
in the lobby area and also sending emails to me and other staff members here are also participating in an online survey. A lot of feedback was received and was able to be incorporated in order to develop a largely consensus-based plan for the improvements that you'll see tonight. Um, what ended up being created was a site master plan uh, and a budget estimate that were presented last year to the town board to consider as part of the 2012 budget process. That project did end up being included in the 2012 budget. Uh, so since then, since the beginning of the year, ProStack and staff have worked with a consultant team from a very well-regarded firm, uh, Design Concepts out of Lafayette, to develop a final recommended design for the Town 9 Park Enhancement Project. Shannon Weber is the principal of Design Concepts. She's here tonight. She's led this design process really since the, since the kind of bubble diagram exercise that we went through last summer. Uh, she'll go over the design components of the um, of the plan with the commission here in a moment. But before I hand this off, I'll just touch briefly on timeline. So after um, this, this commission has a chance to review this project, we're scheduled to take a, make a presentation before the town board on May 14th to go over the design um, with, the, with the town board members then. And then after that, the construction, dra construction drawings will be finalized over the next couple of weeks for posting for a construction bid solicitation by the end of the month. And a construction contract is scheduled to come before the board, town board, uh, for, con for consideration of approval in June, and then construction is scheduled to start in July. It's not a not a, a huge project. It shouldn't take more than a couple months. So it should be done by September. You know, the uh, the elements that you'll see aren't particularly complex, uh, but it'll have some ordering and some different materials that will need to take a few weeks in order to get all ready. So with that, I'll introduce ProStack Chair Jim Ch Jim Payne, who will review the community engagement process that the committee spearheaded last year, and then Shannon Weber will go over the design and any of the details. So feel free to interject with any questions you might have. Thank you. Thanks. Good evening, Commissioners. Fred, um, Jim Payne, Chair of ProStack. Um, I'm just going to give you a brief highlight, and I won't even go through all the detail because I don't think you need it, but because this was a... Uh, uh, the, the major issue we had to we had to address and certify for the board and for our own purposes was the nature of this park. Was it to, exactly what kind of park was it to be? Um, it has been in the comprehensive plan and, and the Prost master plan for what six seven years now as essentially a neighborhood park, and we reaffirmed that. We just wanted to make sure everybody was on the same page. Uh, the board certainly was, and ProStack agreed, and the community was very insistent that this be a neighborhood park. So once that decision was made, um, things followed f from that um, pretty naturally. And uh, that also enabled us to do very intensive outreach to the Sagamore and original town neighborhoods. A lot easier than going to the entire town. So uh, we had uh, multiple points of contact. Um, community meetings um, going back to January, and this is last year, this is January of 2011 when this began. And um, for example, in the February 23rd meeting, uh, we actually went door to door through original town and superior members of ProStack, even some of the members of the town board, uh, to talk this up and to get people's um, input and to encourage them to come to the meetings. We had postcards. We had realtor boxes throughout the northern neighborhoods with flyers. We use the electronic media of the town, and of course, the website and the um, newsletters. So it was pretty intensive, probably the most intensive outreach um, that's been done for this kind of thing to make sure that everybody had uh, was aware of what we were doing and we got the most impact, we could, the most input we could get. Um, so. At, we had various points, I lost count, but there were very, very many points of contact with the board through work sessions mostly. Um, m many, if not most of the board, attended many of these meetings, so there was a close involvement from the board all the way through. It wasn't something that was presented to them at the end of the line uh, as, a, as a recommendation. They were, many of them were very well aware of the process and attended many of the meetings. And that reflects the intense interest I think that the board had in this particular uh, project and the desire to get it right. So it, so the major points that I'll leave with you from this process was that it was reaffirmed to be a neighborhood park, meaning that not a community park, meaning that the primary input was to come from the neighbors and the surrounding 
uh, in the northern neighborhoods, even though, of course, all meetings were open and everyone was encouraged to come from throughout the town. And we did get input from other parts of the town. Um, it's to remain non-programmed. That had been the policy, and that uh, is currently the assumption, meaning that the, any facilities, amenities, fields in the Town 9 would be, um, would be not programmed uh, officially. And a general agreement that the um, western part of the, of, the, of the rectangle, if you will, would remain the active part and the eastern part that's in, that really uh, intrudes into neighborhoods and closer to housing would remain uh, passive. And um, then also from as a neighborhood park, it would have to have certain key ingredients that you would expect, um, such as teen amenities, uh, fields, paths, playgrounds, and that sort of dictated that whole process of looking at those various elements. Um, and the only other thing there is that it out of the community meetings and out of the and from members of the board, there was a strong direction to maintain some um, element of a quality youth baseball facility in the equation. So there was a lot of time was spent on that, a lot of discussion. If there was one element that was most uh, thoroughly debated throughout the process, uh, it was the nature of that. So what you'll see today as far as the baseball element that's in the multi-purpose multi field um, part of the equation uh, reflects that, need, that, that um, extensive community input and discussion with the board and with ProStack. So this year, the, the board approved this, it gave us a head nod in last August on the design plan, which was design concepts, uh, uh, planning, and also green play who we've used in this town for many years, also worked with Design Concepts and was a facilitator at the public meetings. And um, uh, that was last August, pending budget. They went through the budget process, so we went through all of that, and $700,000 was designated in the budget to essentially fund what we had, what we had uh, tentatively agreed on, what the board had tentatively, um, I won't say approved, but had, had liked in, in August. And uh, from January until now, we've been in the process this year of that final uh, design. We've had more community meetings, and the last community meeting was last week, um, where I think we had very enthusiastic response to, to what design concepts had to, to present. So um, if you have any questions for me uh, on the process, I'll take them now. But otherwise, I'll turn it over to Shannon. Weber for the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay, like, um, can you guys hear me? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If um, you if you could just go ahead and introduce yourself one oh, more I'm time. Sorry. Shannon Weber with Design Concepts. Thank you. Landscape Architect. So um, for Town Nine, as Jim and um, Martin. This is the, the 12, 2012 recommendation master plan. Um, just to give you a rundown basically of what we're going to include, um, we have the existing park area. Let me switch that. Is it a top the other one? The, the little button on the top, can you slide it the other direction? There's a little yeah. technical question. Yeah, there we go. Thanks, Martin. <laughs> you think I'd be used to it by now, right? Um, anyhow, this is the existing playground that you guys have out there right now, or play apparatus, I'll call it, and the play pit and the walk that comes down the street. What we are going to do is we're designing, we're expanding that whole play area, and we are going to put a play pit or play area in this upper portion, and then it separates with a little bit of turf and landscape, and then we have a larger turf area that will include more play pieces. So really what we're doing is we're expanding what you guys have right now and making it a little bit more interesting in terms of play value. Um, it terraces down, so obviously this is our highest point, so everything on the site is sloping down, and we're working with the existing conditions out there is what we're doing, um, and we're creating these play areas down below, so if you can envision it you know, from a section, this is the highest point coming down. And then of course the basketball court, we're putting in a full-size basketball court, 
and um, over here is a large 20 by 20 shelter, picnic shelter or shade shelter that we're putting in, um, with a walk that comes off of this side of the street. And then down here we have a teen activity area, and I'll show you more detail of what that includes here in just a minute. And along um, the ball field area, we're going to put in a permanent full-size backstop, as well as we're going to skin some um, running paths. I was going to my uh, the running, yeah, the running paths, I guess, to the bases. So I'll show you a little bit more detail about that as well. Um, the plan also includes a crusher finds walk, and the upper portion is in the shape of the kite trail. Uh, as a part of the full master plan, the kite trail, of course, is historic to the town of Superior. So that's where this alignment is coming from, and we intend to do some um, interpretive presentation of it, I guess is the best way to say it, and I'll explain to that to you a little bit more. Horseshoe pits will go in down here, um, crusher finds trail again right here. Everything along this walk stays the same. We're not changing this walk. It's going to stay the same. The only thing we want to add in this walk is some distant markers to tell you how far you're going if you're running or, or walking around the park. So right now it's a little over a half mile all the way around. So we're going to determine what we want to put um, in for distances. And then we're going to have that as the um, ground plane along this walk for ease of maintenance. All the way around there. The existing restroom is right here in landscape. We're not changing anything there. We um, left the existing walk um, and drive right through here. And then there is a slack line that's going in right here. It's kind of hard to see on this drawing, but it goes in right here. Does everybody know what a slack line is? Cool. So I think that's going to be something that's going to be really fun to do. So with that, we'll go into a little bit more detail. You guys got the set of drawings that we're working on right now. Um, what I did is we just put together the areas that I think will be the most interest to you guys in terms of what we're doing is the core areas that we just talked about. So this is the play area that I was describing before. It's a blow up and again this is your play apparatus and your existing walk that goes around with your pit. Um, we have again this walk that gets you on the upper terrace I'll call it and then there's a walk that goes all the way down and around here with the play pit in this spot and another play pit here with play apparatuses. And so we'll go into detail a little bit more about what these pieces are going to be, but you can start to see how they lay out in the play pits and how many pieces we can get in each play pit. We also have to make it handicap accessible, these playgrounds, so we have to include a concrete ramp here and right here, and then we will have to add one here up here at your existing play pit. Um, there's benches on the inside of here and along the back side. We are going to add some more benching along here, or seating, I guess you call it, right here. This is all turf, as well as this turf area. So we want to give some areas where people could just sit on the slope, put out a blanket, you know, if they don't want to sit on a bench and just kind of watch the kids or play or whatever they want to do. On this side, I didn't really show this in the master plan, but this is an outdoor, it's a really small outdoor classroom is what we're calling it. And it's something that we wanted to include in the plan. Um, GoCo for GoCo funding. It's one of those great things to include in your grant, and it's a really easy and fun thing to do. It works right. It works really nicely across from the shelter, which is right here, and then this trail gets you down to that teen area I was showing you earlier on the master plan. Um, and then, of course, like I said, walking down this is the basketball court, and an alternate is to do this 10 by 10 shelter. Let me go in later on. <coughs> Any questions about that? So some of the play equipment, like uh, Jim said, we've gone through the process, met with ProStack three different times, um, gave them different options of play equipment that we thought would fit nicely with the theme of the park and with the play pieces that we, we know from our experience is really popular and doing design. So the upper pit, that north pit that I've shown you before, will include, it's called the Evos. And we like the structure because it's a little bit different than your post and platform that you have up there right now. It's new in terms of architecture. It's not your traditional standard post and platform play piece. But there's a lot of different components in here. Um, and it works anywhere from the ages of two all the way up to tween, tweens or teens. Um, lots of upper body strength as well as um, balancing. Um, again, it's a different kind of architecture, but it's meant to be that composite play that you see throughout. What we liked about it too is it really picked up on the radial pattern of our design. And a lot of what we're doing with this park is the theming of mining and the railroad. 
So we thought some pieces, you know, in particular these areas really remind us of the tracks of the railroad. So again, we're just trying to pull in and make it all come together. We want to include swings in that upper north area. Um, we just have a T-post in here with a couple of different toddler swings. Spinners are really, really popular and don't take up a lot of space. Not really expensive, but again, really popular. And of course, the balance beam. So those are the pieces we're able to get up there in that north area. On the south pit, the, very, the one at the bottom, lower, again, that bigger space, um, we're, we're working with this piece here. What we wanted to do is think about mining and the different modes of doing mining. So bulldozer was one of the fun things that's already out there we thought we'd bring in. Great for um, that younger age group. We have arch swings. Uh, they get some swings in there again. Then um, supernova, which is again very popular. It spins and it's a big balance piece. And then the other nice thing that we really wanted to do is include some climbing features. That was a request, a pretty strong request from the get-go. And these are uh, rocks with ropes in between. And that will go in that bottom pit as well. A couple of things that we don't show on here that we were able to squeeze in on those voids is a couple of spring riders. Uh, you know, those are the things where the kids rock back and forth. Really inexpensive, but it, just a couple more pieces we can get to that pit. So we're going to include those. So uh, one of the things that we also heard a really strong interest in was the uh, fitness course. And in our overall master plan, we talked about doing a fitness course on that outside trail that you guys have out there around the park right now. Um, in our profession, we're finding that more and more the fitness stations are becoming very popular to cluster them together. And so what we're doing is we're showing some different stations, I will call them, but we're not going to put them, spread them out like you traditionally used to see. We're going to put group them in one area, right up by the play area. And the whole idea is so that if you're a parent or not, if you want to be up there exercising, you can look down, look over the play area and see your kid playing, but maybe exercise at the same time. So we're going to have these grouped together in one area, and again, that's an alternate, but the distant stations around the path will be part of the base bid. Um, these are examples of the town's um, standards for um, furniture out there. So the picnic table, the benches, the grills, and the trash receptacles. I just like to keep those included in the presentation so everybody's aware of what we're going to put in there for that. The shelter, the big shelter you saw at the bottom part of the plan, uh, we're going to go with this one, um, this model. It's called the Northwest. And we're going to do a little bit of customizing to it, and you can see that in our plans. Or actually, you'll see it in here, I'm sorry. Um, but what we want to do is do the stone columns and pick up on the red flagstone that this building here has in front and really carry through a lot of the characteristics architecturally from this building out to here. And then, of course, we were trying to pick up on something that really um, lent itself to the mining theme as much as we could with a pre-manufactured piece, a shelter. The ball field, um, as Jim explained, um, <coughs> this is going to be a full-size backstop, and I have some details in here to kind of show you what we're going to do to make that unique to Town 9. Um, we've also put in, like I said, a running path, running base paths for Little League and for... Um, T-ball. T-ball, thank you. Mm -hmm. I, I might blink. Um, <laughs> for T-ball bases and Little League. So this is giving you a skin running path for both of those, the distances for both of those running paths, as well as the pitcher's mound. These are the existing boulders that are out there right now. So this bath stop that I was talking to you a little bit about, um, we'd really like to customize it and make it unique to Town 9. It's a little hard to see in this, but we'll scooch over here in a minute. Um, but we're picking up on the name of the field up here at the top. And then we're, um, Martin, if you can go to the right for me a little bit. Thank you. That is the name of the field that we want to put at the top of the backstop. Kup, Kup, Kupner? Kupner. Thank you, Kupner <laughs> Field. Um, and then we want to pick up on some mining icons or images and really customize the top of that backstop all the way across here. And then those images are going to be picked up throughout the entire design of the park. So that's how we're bringing the whole theming and the concept and the ideas together from the very west end to the east end of the park. Okay, the 
teen area, the teen activity area, um, it, we've done a couple of different reiterations here, got lots of great input in terms of what we want to see out there. Teens are a tough age to try and, and satisfy, but um, with the location of this, what we are proposing to do is this trail really kind of connects to that, that shelter I was showing you a little bit earlier on the master plan. Um, there's a walk that goes from that shelter and brings you all the way down to the teen area. And this is off the walk that's existing right now. So I'll start down here at the bottom. This is the crusher finds shoulder that's out there right now. So we're going to do a crusher finds pad, I will call it. And this is where we want to put in a couple of fitness stations that I was showing you earlier. Knowing that with teens, especially boys, you know, chin, you know, push ups and pull ups and chin ups and all that is really popular. It's just a couple of pieces on this bottom portion. It steps up with the grade, and then here along this edge and this edge here, we have a couple of seat walls that will also act as a skateboard rail. So we brought this walk all the way down here so you can get enough run to be able to skate on these and then come back down again. So that's why the walk is is long and linear and straight, um, so we can get that. And then in this plan, we're proposing a ping pong table. You can do a concrete ping pong table and put it out to the site. Again, thinking about that age group and what would interest them. And um, we put in some boulders for seating along the top edge. Uh, there'll be some landscape all the way around with trees for shade, so we can shade it as much as we can. A lot with that, that teen age is, you all may know with kids who are teenagers, it's all about being with your friends and hanging out. Yeah, that's a big part of what they like to do, socialize. So that's what this area is for. And then um, we heard that a climbing wall was a big interest that they would love to see out there and challenging for that age group. So this walk terminates at a play pit. Again, we have to have that for safety purposes. And then having a climbing boulder is the concept for at the very end of that teen area. Some theming is um, an area that we're working on right now, have been for a little while, but we're starting to put it all together and it's still evolving. This is just simply conceptual right now, but we're starting to get our images together, um, some concepts together. But back at our, um, our play area, which of course is the core of your park, we really want to pick up on the different walks that I talked about and pick up on themes that are um, relevant to this area and the history that happened in the Superior Area. So I'll start up here at the top. Um, this outdoor classroom that I was talking to you a little bit about, there's been remnants of Native American stone rings found in this area. Looking back again and doing our research on the history, so we thought it would be great to include a flame. You can sandblast the flame in the center of this outdoor classroom and then some of these images will be sandblasted on the stones. So keeping it very um, simple but tying it into the history of the site. So that is right here. And then picking up on the ranchers, we call it the ranchers loop. So that loop is all the way around here. And again, we're playing with these images, put some, we've done a little bit of research on the farms and the homesteads and the uh, crops that were grown out here. So we'll pick up on that on this loop here. The railroad loop will be on this upper portion. And again, we're looking at the different types of just the engines and the different cars that were used. And then we've talked a little bit, we may pull in this, this is right now showing the railroad loop, but we may pull in the, um, the environmental aspect of this area, like the wildlife and plant material and that sort of thing. So we'll bring that on this loop. And then the last thing is the miners loop is here. And again, we're picking up on some of those icons that I just described earlier um, on the ball field. That's up. So that information, we're beginning to tie it in all together and really, again, think about the history of Superior at the site. And then down at the bottom where the shelter is, um, the industrial mine camp. And some different images we started to put together, we started doing more research and how that all lays out and how we want to incorporate it into that shelter. Uh, right here is the kite trail map, um, because this is the beginning of that kite trail that goes across the site over into here. We thought it'd be great to show the layout of the kite trail so that you can in the alignment that it is. Uh, so we saw that name right now. The shelter, I was talking to you a little bit about that. This is how we want to customize it. We've got it, um, some ideas, again, picking up on those icons that we described or showed you a little bit earlier on the backstop, repeating that here. 
um, doing whatever we can to make it customizing it for Town 9 Park. Um, things like the abstract um, coal beds, how we can tie that into the base underneath the shelter again. We may actually do in a little bit, it's been a week now since we, we showed this the first time, so we may pull this out from underneath the here a little bit and do it on the outskirts. But then this interpretive signage, a very natural stone that's just sandblasted with a little bit of history and tells the story of the different loops and why we did what we did. So as you come to the park, you may start here. And really, it, put, it really ties it all together, why we did what we did and how it things like that. And then lastly, the kite trail um, is that northern portion again that I showed you earlier where we have the map actually sandblasted over here. But we wanted to somehow, um, I guess just educate the user. And so some ideas that we had, again, an inspiration is to do metal art in the form of the, the, the rancher and the um, cattle and the horses, and then also the, um, the train, the railroad that came through this and do some metal. We thought it'd be great if we could do full size, but we're not <coughs> to into pricing right now and see if that's even something we can do. But we thought it'd be a great thing if it, you know, just think about driving by that park and looking over and seeing that silhouette. Where does the term kite trail come from? Yeah. <laughs> How long ago was the railroad? Is the railroad? I haven't yeah. heard that one. The shape of the shape of the line. Yeah. So if you look at this, you see a kite. Oh yeah. yeah. And then the train coming down. There's a boulder. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then also we want to pick up on a couple of key areas, of course, along that trail where the train stopped and did it. Um, different stops. We know Superior's not right here, it's actually down here a little bit farther, so we intend to have wayfinding, I guess is a good way to put it, where you have an error that tells you how many miles to Superior. So we're working out that concept a little bit more, but those are some ideas that we have in the Kite Trail. Real simple, again, but just to help people understand why we did what we did and the layout and how it all ties together with the history of the Next, uh, yeah. That's our next uh, section of the public hearing. Does any member of the commission have uh, questions of the applicant? Sure. Sure. Um, first off, I'm just thrilled, and you know my son is thrilled. Yeah. Excited about this happening and, and coming forward. I think you guys have done just an amazing job. The Prostack's done a great job um, making this a neighborhood park and not overwhelming it with, with too much. Mm -hmm. um, it's a nice balance. Um, and uh, so a couple, just a couple comments and a, a few questions. Um, you didn't mention budget constraints, and as you did in the in the community meeting, Is, are, are we assuming we can do all of this now at this point, or has that changed since the community meeting? Uh, no, um, right now what we did is at the DD level, design development level, we put together a cost estimate, and so we kept track of it as we're going. It's still evolving, so things will shift and change a little bit as we go, but our goal is to stay at that $700,000. So right now what we're showing you are conceptual ideas, and we're getting pricing right now and making sure that it's all within the budget, and if we can't do it, we'll have to look at ways of of either sizing down might be a good way of putting it. You know, this is a really good example. If these come in way too expensive, you know, it's just out of the question. We're going to have to look at other ways of accomplishing what we want to accomplish within the budget. So we're working. I mean, it, it's working with us side by side. I guess simultaneously, we're doing design and working on the budget as we go and keeping track of it as much okay. as we can. And the, and the reason I ask is that that teen area. I, I just feel like without that rock is going to be pretty heavily lacking. Mm -hmm. And so since you had mentioned that that was potentially an alternate piece in the community meeting, yeah. um, I want I want to emphasize and let the Planning Commission know that that was an alternate piece that might get added and it was $65,000 or something yeah. I think, for that yeah. piece. So are some of those things contingent upon the GOCO grant? No, it's the but that's well I don't know. I I don't know what they're gonna if they get the GOCO. I think the budget's seven hundred and the way they're saying they'd like to have the GOCO grant to offset that. Uh -huh. Whether we could encourage them to bump it if we, you know, to get some of these alternate pieces, depending right. on how it goes. Yeah. I, I just wanted to bring that up because I knew that was an alternate piece, and I think it's a pretty important piece for that 
for that area of the park. So, um, is there any consideration to, to um, the tree and any tree and shade clusters on the west end of the park, and uh, maybe specifically around the horseshoe pit or anything else? It's it's pretty open down there. East, east end. Or east. east. I'm east. sorry. Did I say west? Yeah, east end. I'm sorry. The east end of the park. Wrote west. Uh, down here. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. We have you know there's existing trees down here now, so they're along this edge. <coughs> And yeah, and we intend to, in the master plan, um, we have more vegetation in through this area. The way budget sits right now, this is what we can we can afford to do at this point in time. Okay, okay. And, you'll, so, and so that was my other question. Your intention is to leave the uh, the row of elms that, yeah. that border the trail along we the We do, yeah. I would recommend leaving those. Um, you know that they're elms and they're dying yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, but the whole idea, and with the help of Alan, we've talked about it quite a bit. Um, Planting along there, so when those trees do die out, there's something to replace them. Would be a good idea. So okay. down the road. And then my last question is: with the development of the Remington Homes development and the straightening of Coal Creek Drive, has any thought been put to what's going to, how, how that's going to flow? How when they straighten Coal Creek Drive, we end up with I don't know another 20 yards or so, or 30 yards of of park area along that strip and how that's going to be handled and see Martin moving around. But. Again, Mark to the town staff. So when the Cold Creek Drive shifts over with the completion of Remington, the developer will be required to make the improvements along the right of way, including curb and gutter on the park side and the asphalt that's out there now, I think we're uh, planning on having become additional parking, some additional parking along the side of Cold Creek. Because if you know, if you've been here on the weekends or when there's a bunch of folks that are using the sports fields on the west side, there are oftentimes a lot of vehicles parked along Cold Creek and they'll head in uh, actually onto the parkway itself or onto the parkland itself. So it's, I think at the staff level we've been planning to um, just increase the, the envelope to include some additional parking. Okay. That's all I got. Just to add one point, I mean, it's, you bring up a good point because when, when the... Uh, <laughs> all right, well when the, when the development eventually goes through, assuming it goes through, remember, a call square park you go to, uh, we, yeah. yeah, I need to the mic, sorry. There it is, there it is. There it is. calls for a, a park across Cold Creek, a park amenity in, right. in that development. In that, mm -hmm. So it would essentially be across from here. So you essentially have that extension across Cold Creek there. And, and as far as the trees, it's somewhat similar to what, what's going on at what we now know as Autry Park. The, the actual trees weren't in the initial budget or plan, but it's part of the regular annual program. So you can see quite a number of trees have been added uh, throughout the area, mm -hmm. particularly in the dog park, that were not even in the original plan. So, so that'll continue Arbor Day celebrations mm -hmm. and things like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Phil says you. I really don't have any questions. I think everything was answered. Okay. okay. My question is mm -hmm. regarding the trail that's. Part the new trail or the existing trail? The, the kite trail, I guess. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Is that just bisecting open field area? It is right now. Right now this is an open area. Right. Um, and again, through going through um, the different meetings that we went through, the input meetings, that was an area that they wanted to leave some open space for throwing the frisbee. Informal play, I guess, would be a good way right. of doing it. Not, nothing programmed. But we wanted to get access from the side of the park over to the play area. So There's a fair amount of grade that. change there too, isn't there? From yeah, the grade kind of change. Kind west to east. Yeah, it's a little flat. I mean, it's it's it really is gradual right through here. It really starts to pick up probably over from right yeah. here and moves this way. Yeah. The only question in my mind about that is, if if someone was going from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. I could see him maybe wanting to go down the trail one time mm -hmm. for the cool factor, but for repetitive trips, mm -hmm. they're, they're going to cut across, across it. it. And mm -hmm. I just, I think it's something that looks cool on paper. From the sky? From the sky. <laughs> but, you know, will it really, Be will, used it really that way. will it really perform as intended, or will it just kind of be there, but be bisecting what could otherwise be just open area. more usable open yeah. area. Well, we do have plan to put some benches and some seating along here. So again, it's it's you know it's 
passive, I guess is the best way of putting it. And we kept that in mind through the design. Also in the alternates, um, we have a couple of different alternates with this project, and, we, and those are extending and, and completing the kite trail. So you will get you know, access from here down to here if we're able to afford it. It'll make a little bit more sense. But for the base bid, this is what we can put in. Yeah. But then, again, the whole idea is for just places to sit and walk. Um, if I guess if you're making a, a, you know, going straight across here, my hope would be that you would use the trails up here. I just think it's such an open area that people will kind of be going all different directions. I mean, I, I kind of agree with Bob in, in, in that that climbing piece, to me, would be very high on the list. But I know, I know that trail is not a very pricey no. piece. But to me, if I was if I was ranking things, I would rank that towards lower, just because people will be <clears throat> coming from every different direction mm -hmm. and and not using the trails for the most part, I would think. If I can add, I mean, make a point there, it's a good point. Um, the crusher fine trails that could be added there are not insignificant, there's cost, but we add them all the time through, throughout the town, so um, that's something that could be done, you know, if, if the demand is there. But I also think it's important, when you look at this, it's hard to, to, to keep this in mind. This is really a very narrow, Park, so you're right. People who always try to cut corners, but it's not a huge open area. It's it's a fairly narrow uh, piece of land, so you're really not asking people to go way out of their way. But you're right. You're going to get that, and that would probably indicate social trails that we may need to eventually turn into real trails. I have a question. I, I have a question. I'm, sure. I'm not understanding the purpose of the ballpark. Okay. <laughs> Period. I mean, I, I, we're putting money in a backstop and a fence mm -hmm. and maintaining baselines, but nothing programmed. Right. We're not putting in benches behind the backstop. Mm -hmm. I mean, even, at, even I coached the league for eight years mm -hmm. from before T-ball mm -hmm. to, to organize competitive baseball. Without a bench, I mean, to put your glove on, to put anything on, that doesn't make sense to me. Mm -hmm. To have a backstop and spend town money maintaining a field that has no programmed doesn't make sense to me. So I, I don't understand the baseball field at all. Okay. I, I, I understand it from the concept of, well, we're not asking, I guess we're not commenting at the moment, so I'll hold my <laughs> comment. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, that's been the most discussed and, and um, debated aspect of this. I mean, there's a strong element within the neighborhoods that um, very much wants to see a baseball element in this park. It goes back to the history of the, the, the days when there was a ball field in what is now Asti Historical Park. Um, it was um, a strong direction that we find some way to incorporate youth ball into the multi-purpose field. So the way I look at it, um, I mean the way I describe it, is that we're really, we're really maintaining and allowing for a baseball element, a baseball capacity in a multi-purpose field. So it's not truly a baseball field in that regard. Um, it, it's not, there's not enough land here, and there's not enough uh, infrastructure and parking and all of those things to really allow it to be a, uh, a true competitive field that would have scheduled play. And if we were to do that, the solution best lies outside of Town 9. You know, there are fields planned for across the road. Um, we've looked at other locations. Roy's address, trying to address that issue. but. Um, It'll be a place where a parent and child or a couple of kids or can go and play pickup ball or practice, um, throw, you know, you know, dad pitching to his, his uh, son or daughter, softball, baseball, kids playing, you know, that kind of thing. And it's meant to be there for that purpose. So think of it as a multi-purpose field with a baseball element. Um, we have no pretension that that's truly a, a a baseball field in every sense of the of the term that a little league team would want to play on. 
but it will be good quality, well maintained, as we do with everything in this town. Um, you know, a, a nice safe backstop because it is sort of close to the to the road as it exists now, and it and it it's there now. So we're just we're just really <coughs> upgrading what's there a little bit. Well, I, what I don't I don't understand why there isn't a compromise. I mean, I coached kids when they were spending more time picking daisies out of the grass than they were paying attention to where the ball was going. That kind of element doesn't need much at all. And they're not going to hit foul balls over the backstop because the backstop's not big enough. T-ball, you know, even machine pitch, which is the next stage, they're, they're not going to hit the ball out of 200-foot park. It's, it's, right. it's not going to happen. So, I mean, when I coached little, little kids, everybody had to pack with their parents a car and drive to Louisville. They still do today because we don't have the fields for them. So I don't understand why there can't be an element for beginning baseball. I understand we're not putting in a baseball field for older kids. We're not programming it for different things. But to have a field that had the elements that could be used for even practice. Um, a team just shows up on a Saturday and they say, hey, everybody just show up here and we'll, we'll use this field. I don't understand why we would go as far as we have and not go a slight step further and make it a usable field for our very small kids. Well, the rec programs, the, the beginning Little League, it's, it's, you know, they're barely even hitting the ball. They don't hit it out of the infield, but I three did, times a game. Sure. So <clears throat> from, from the community spec perspective, we don't want that to get programmed. We really don't. We don't want it built in such a way that it'll eventually get programmed. We don't want it to be a programmed area. We want it to be a neighborhood park. We don't want it to be a community park element. So a lot of the feedback, a lot of the feelings just of those of us who live there are that let's keep that simple, place to go just play pickup ball and throw your bats and balls and your stuff on the sideline and sit there. I, we, we did comment on having a bench or two, but there are some physical restrictions based on the topography where the backstop is that they couldn't but yeah there's there was some interest in putting a bench in but making it anything more than a place to just go hang out play unprogrammed non-programmed baseball how many kids does know. it take to play unprogrammed baseball Two. kids don't even know how to play over the line anymore believe me i coached competitive baseball kids and i said hey let's play over the line they didn't know what the heck that was mm -hmm. it's like saying you know kids go out and they use concrete basketball courts anymore. They don't. They all expect to play inside. So I don't understand. I don't understand that, that spending the money to take it, maintain it. I have no problem with the backstop, but to put in baselines and maintain it like a baseball field, but then who, not allowing people to use it or not taking it to the next step of certain aspects being able to use it doesn't make sense to me and then maintaining it and spending the money. I mean, just put in the backstop and just let the grass grow then, because that's all you need to do what you're talking about. You just need grass. You don't yeah. need baselines and bases and maintenance and all this stuff. So are you addressing it from a cost concern? I mean, it's it, the, the consensus has been very strong from, from all sides, with a few exceptions, that um, and I'll, you know what Bob just stated uh, is that if it, it, if we go any further, it's going to. The other issue is that at some point it interferes with the use of this. This is now essentially has become two multi-purpose fields again for pickup use for practice. Um, you know, teams use it for practice, uh, um, soccer, all of them, um, and it's worked very well and it's heavily used and. Um, we see that the baseball would be another multi-purpose field use, but if we take it much further, then we we run the risk of interfering with, with this use as a multi-purpose field, and that's, right now, there's much greater demand for that than there is for that use as a ball I guess, field. I so guess the, the one, since we're, we are discussing this, I would just say that in, in developing a field that is has the level of maintenance that you're talking about to Craig's point is that you are going to get um, 
teams that will show up there to practice that are little league teams or t-ball teams uh, they will drop in and do it just like the um, frisbee golf or the frisbee uh, ultimate frisbee players did and they will use it extensively i i'm sure that they will right and it'll have electric we're, we're not going to hopefully won't put boulders across the infield to so the, so no, no, that we're not going to use it i mean uh, that's fine. That's will happen. Kind of use, just, though. That's exactly. Right. That's fine. If, if but but the issue, no with, issue with the ultimate frisbee was that the teams were dominating the the use right. of the field, and I think that you will find with a team with a field maintained that way that you're going to get a lot of baseball use out of it. Uh, that it's just basically free practice field. That's fine. It's absolutely no different now than the, those times of the years when soccer teams are heavily using it for practice and pickup. We have a lot. We still have, in fact. We have a lot of ulti ultimate frisbee use there, but instead of taking the whole field, mm -hmm. they work in a quarter or one field. That's fine. I mean, we've the capacity has increased. We're, we're utilizing all of those different teams and sports and activities have a place on this field. Baseball will too. So if a baseball team shows up and and uses that, they're every bit entitled to do that as entitled as any soccer. Football or anyone I else guess all I'm su suggesting is that I, it may be contrary to the notion that you you're going to have this you know sort of pickup type field that's going to be available a lot. I think it's going to be available even less than or used more than maybe you you, you envisioned if that's really your intent. So that's, that's yeah. just okay. my I, I think I think that they, during the season that they probably will get used. I mean I'm on sitting on the, the Monarch Little League board now, and they are. I mean, to, to have a free place to actually go and right. practice is definitely attractive to them. So, like, you're right, right. You're going to get some. You're going to get some pickup play there. Um, and so, I don't understand how benches don't fit in with pickup play. I think we'd all love to have benches. Right? The, the issue is a, is a is a structure. It has to. It, you, can you speak to that? Because yes, yes we, we agree. Benches would be cool, but let, <laughs> let let me let her tell you why we don't have benches so or can't have benches or budget or whatever. So you can it's not here. budget. <laughs> The toe of the slope, the grade drops down quite a bit right here, so we are maybe a foot away from the bottom of that slope. So to put a bench on this side definitely would not work. We have the option of doing it back here and back here, but we definitely don't have a bench here. And definitely well, you not wouldn't need a bench on two sides if you're not programming play, if you're not having games. So that's an easy My, my intention, you know, coaching kids, you always have a kid that hurt his finger or something happened to him or he doesn't feel well and he says can I go sit down yeah go sit down wherever mm -hmm. no you okay you sit on the bench you don't get up from the bench okay. and that that way the coach can keep track of the kid and there but is not, not to have that. any benches for them to put their equipment to go sit down even to even let's say let's say a coach does go down there and just pick up the field them sit down and talk to him I just I don't see why there's zero bench <coughs> I'm not. I'm not arguing for program play. I understand where that has gone. Um, I think it's a little bit of a not in my backyard syndrome. But um, I, I, I would think that there, there's room. It's not a high dollar item. Sure. You're putting benches other other place for just random people to sit on. It seems like a more logical place to have at least a stretch of bench for some kids to sit on. And if you're playing program play or, or not program play, even a pickup game, you want some place for them to be behind the backstop. Mm -hmm. uh, not, not, you know, well, there's no place to sit out there, so they're sitting someplace else where right. they may get hit by a ball. Yeah, no, that's an easy enough thing to do. Um, I think that Can I ask a leading question? I mean, this is gets to the root of the problem. There's a backstop that was existing there already. Mm -hmm. Is there any use in this park in the past? With the ball, little league, anything going on with the existing backstop? Does anybody know? Again, my toe down staff. I have a chance to go out there a couple times a week. I see people there regularly. Uh, okay. I hear a lot on weekends, and I see people using it for baseball. This, this past weekend, I saw probably a family, a couple, maybe a couple of families playing. So yeah, the, I guess the answer is, or if the question is whether or not it's used for baseball, the answer is yes. Yeah, because I, I was just curious. I mean, I could see this ending up being a. A park that's heavily used as a t-ball little league park, or it, it could end up just sitting there with a backstop mm -hmm. <laughs> built to the Cuffner Field. Right. Well, I think that, I guess. that was addressed. That, that there was there's been a lot of conversation. <clears throat> well, I understand that, but about I just, about, about having a, a ball field in 
in and around original town again. So well, there's the, the there's desire is there as the use of it. Yeah, I mean, I'm just telling you, it's a 60 foot base path thing. Yeah. So it's it's not a regulation field. That's what it is for the little guys. It is for the little, 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 little guys. Little yeah, yeah, it's for the little guys. I mean, that's to yeah, me, that's right. what you want to make it useful. A, for. a 60 foot base pad is a regulation size softball field. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So I, I mean, I'm fine with it. it just it bothers me that it's not really set up to me uh, a few things lacking to make it really kind of work it does have power right by the way to, to allow for a pitching yeah. machine but, yeah. yeah it will um, that's yeah, that's that. but we've been including the cost estimate so there will be power over to here yeah that's great that was always hard to find mm -hmm. yeah yeah and but you can no lighting your cell phone. no mm -hmm. lighting at the ball yeah. field there is lighting elsewhere in the park yeah, so but at the ball field, I picked yeah, up yeah. on that quick. Yeah. That's that's it gets good, back into the night lighting. It gets expensive. Yeah, uh, just <clears throat> a few street lights. You could probably get into dusk. You know, right? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Tom, any other questions? Yeah, I, I do. Uh, okay. Questions? I just wait my turn. Um, I was concerned also about the basketball court. There's a push among a lot of land use planners to do whatever those kind of like the tennis court thing that went out mm. out the window mm -hmm. and your opinions on that i mean a lot of people spent a lot of money ripping out tennis courts that were years yeah. ago and is is that really you know usable, full usable type yeah. situation you think it is actually basketball is a great for that tween and teen age especially right. it's a great thing i know it's over here we right. have it over here but we moved it over here so it could be visible and used for all age groups but basketball still, it is pretty much even keel. It is still used all the time. Um, and I, don't, I can't remember one time I've ever turned out a basketball court. I have overlaid a basketball court to improve mm -hmm. it, but never torn it out. Now with tennis, that is definitely a, a trend, yes. a trendy sport. That's so um, right now we're seeing it back on the rise. You know, tennis courts are back on the rise. It's something that people want to see, communities want to see. Um, so we do. That's more something that we pull out because of the space that it takes. But basketball never, you know. Also, yeah, you know, on that, you know, we took. Uh, there's only one real basketball court outside of the schools, which are not easy to use, okay. um, in town, and that's at the east end of Community Park. And when Indiana was redone, um, there used to be a skate rink, line skate rink there. Um, we upgraded that, so it's now a regulation. You know, good back, good um, backstops and posts, and everything's very, very well done. It's heavily used, I know, because I live there and I look back over it. Um, and it's not just basketball; though it gets a lot of basketball used from all ages. It's also a very popular place for for parents to go with their kids to teach them to ride bikes and all that sort of thing. So, it's a very heavily, heavily used amenity, and I would expect that it would be here too. Okay. And what size is this court? It's a full regulation. Full regulation. We've also, one of the comments that came out of the community meeting last week was adding some element for a lower height um, basket. So we've, we've done some experiment, we're looking at that to see if there's some way to add a, like a single basket pod off the side or on the side of the court with a lower basket. Um, so that was one thing that came out of the community. The slam dunk. Uh, yeah. The slam dunk. Yeah. dunk uh, you're going to keep your rim straight. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we know. <laughs> and I, I got a couple more questions. <laughs> the metal art stuff, pretty pretty looking uh, silhouettes, art like stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got to find somebody that does that. That, that could be a pretty pricey little yeah, deal. Yeah, and that's what we're talking to. We have a couple of different suppliers that we check. We do a lot of that kind of that work. That have actually. done that? Yeah. Okay. So we're checking into pricing right now. As I mentioned before, we're going to kind of see what it comes in at and see where, where we're at with it in budget. But even if we don't do it full size, which would be cool, a very cool impact to have out there and a very, um, well, just a good impact. But we may take that same image and maybe it becomes smaller and maybe it's mounted onto something, um, but the concept is still there. So, yes, to answer your question, we do a lot of cutouts. Uh, the cutouts. playground equipment, uh, you're working with a couple of suppliers, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the more you cluster that, the more economies of scale you get. I, I could see yeah. that getting put a lot of hand with about two or three different sources. Right, you mean the play equipment itself? Yeah, mm -hmm. and we are. We tried to pick pieces where it was one or two suppliers. And unfortunately, there's some people, or some things, like the Supernova is a really good example. 
you know, it's really super popular. We know it's used in all the parks. The kids love it, but it's not something that one of the other suppliers that have a lot of pieces carries. So we're trying to keep it at a minimal as much as we can. I think right. right now we have two to three different suppliers. And lots of times, too, we're not going to sole source this. It has to be something that comes in as an approved equal. So it's a matter of waiting to see what comes in at bid time and how they can make it an approved equal, and then we can make the decision as to whether or not we can stay with one mm -hmm. vendor or a couple vendors instead of doing several. But our goal is not to do that. And the kite trail mm -hmm. thing that's up there, it's in the middle of the east east section of right. land. That's so. You, so the the true intention of this is to be a permanent thing. Right, and it is a soft trail. It's a crusher fight trail. Right, not oh, it's a, a soft trail. Mm -hmm. That's why usually when you do the soft trails, it's not necessarily thought of as a permanent solution. Mm -hmm. Just a, a soft I trail. think too. A, a, a lot of us are running that area, mm -hmm. and it's kind of a neat addition just to have something different if you're different. not into going out in the long trail runs. A lot of people do run that park. I mean, the concerns on keeping it more permanent would be a do like a standing curb edge type thing. Uh, the pressure okay. fines, yeah. Again, I'm keeping it in my budget. All right. Yeah, trying to keep it as close as we can. But you're right, that would be a more permanent um, way to deal with it. Right. Just one question for me, since I don't see them on the the diagram, are the uh, the great boulder wall going through the multi-purpose field staying in this redesign? Yes. Okay. Yes. We're not worried that's going to interfere with the outfield of the ball field. Nope. Okay. No, we're good. We're still yeah, we still have two hundred feet. We still have almost two hundred feet at the at the left field. Um, left field extension. It's a little short, maybe one hundred, one hundred eighty. 180 to 185 feet as you get the boulders go down there so as you get to the outfield it's more than 200 feet and I think this comes down to about 185 feet something like that this field is essentially the, the green area that you see is about um, what do we say 390 feet by about 65 yards so about by about 180 about by 200 feet so um, you'd, you'd still have a nice, comfortable outfield. Okay. And that's, the boulders have been very effective in, uh, so in, in increasing the use of the field and solving the problems we're having. Oh, yeah, I know, because my son practices soccer out there and doesn't <laughs> have to fight with the uh, ultimate Frisbee teams anyway. Right. So. <laughs> yes, I had a question. I, I think you show on your uh, waste baskets, you mm -hmm. know, trash receptacles. Trash. Yeah. What about for dogs? I see people with dogs mm -hmm. out there all the time. Yeah. Are there be stations for that, or is that going to be, we exactly. don't want yeah. them on there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's pretty much standard the way it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll include them. Um, the, um, in, in relation to um, the, the planned Remington Homes development, mm -hmm. there, I remember imagery from from the approval, the, you know, the initial concept plans, things like that, of um, some sort of entry feature, maybe exiting their um, park, and with some pedestrian crossing or something heading over to to, to Town Nine. Is, if we contemplated that and how we've uh, it, it, the relationship of Town Nine to the Re to Remington and how that will play in the future, at all in terms of the connectivity of folks in that neighborhood. Yeah, another question was along the line. Do you have the ability to move the angle of that exit that goes south to Cool Creek Drive? Like, if we need to get, I mean, we would right. want to cross at a crossing. We want these cross, exactly. that's where we're going. Here. Well, I want, yeah, I'm wondering yeah, about, did we, we kind of planned that alignment, sort of, right? It's either at a street, there's two streets that yeah. come up, it's either there, or uh, it, it attaches to some sort of a feature in that we would have to, in their plan that would so that in their open space which is mm -hmm. generally about in the middle that, mm -hmm. that if they had an outlet there that it would connect to that point uh, I mean I guess the question is you have flexibility there is that it John yeah it's it's so it's get, just yeah we, we either support. flexible or have we contemplated that at this point yeah. no, I think it's a good thing I know it's down there um, and we'll look at the plans I know you sent over a plan so we'll look and see where that connection is I'm mm -hmm. sure it makes sense for crossing. 
Yeah, look That's at their preliminary PD, see how they set up that. There's a walk in there that goes north to the sidewalk. And uh, we may be getting plans from them anyway. Oh, okay. Within the next, you know, for their FTP. Um, but uh, just something that we will we'll make that work. Let's just put it that way. We'll okay. make that crossing work in a logical manner. Mm -hmm. As long as you've got some flexibility as to maybe how you might. We do. I mean, we just want to make sure we, we had an entrance off the south end getting into the right. Right, because you line up really nicely on the north and they go right up straight up into the marketplace right. and their plaza area and all right. that stuff. Right, exactly. Nice. Yeah, it's right in here. Yeah, very good. Okay. Um, and just like I didn't know about the kite name, kite trail. I, the kite trail name, I also don't know much about the town nine name. And are we in love with the town nine name? I'm actually yes. a little annoyed that it got named. That's going to change. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's not enough. Uh, we'll do something uh, probably along the lines of what we did with Autry Park. The same so There'll be some name or name renaming what, or what something. What does it mean? Point. What is it? What it just means the nine acres. Those nine acres, right? Yeah. That's what I was, it's not, not even nine acres, acres but it's only 8.3 <laughs> or something. But it's like the Richmond 13, <laughs> Town 9. nine and uh, Yeah, it, it, this, is, this is, though, just to emphasize, this is Kump, Kupner Field, mm -hmm. named after John Kupner, former mayor. So that remains Kupner Field, but the right. park would have a full designation. Yeah, so I, I understood that. Um, <clears throat> Um, um, I was uh, one question about the basketball court. What is what's that surface? Is it just concrete? Asphalt. asphalt. Oh, asphalt. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we'll do an asphalt concrete, or I'm sorry, an asphalt pad, but we'll do a concrete edge around the asphalt pad. So because you know asphalt has a tendency to, to deteriorate mm -hmm. and bleed out on the edges. So we always put a, a we call it a concrete mo band. That's what mm -hmm. we call it, mm -hmm. and it goes around the outside edge of that asphalt. Okay. Makes it nice and contained. Easy to maintain. And, and another question really is your asphalt. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, it's it'll be four inches. Four. Is that good? Yeah. Yeah. Four is good. There will be no point of driving on it. Yes, for weeds and stuff. Yeah. But that concrete will help a lot. Yeah, it will. It does help. Okay. Um, and then just, I was just asking about the location of the slack line. Yep. Um, was that. Was it sort of filling in space there, or, and I don't, is that, is, is there, is there a change in grade right there as well? No, there is actually not, which is one of the reasons why it's there, because okay. we were trying to find a spot that was a little bit out of the way of all the active, um, just the activity that's going on here in the core area, and kept it somewhat flat and also out of views. There's a lot of different, we moved it around quite a bit. I, I, I was just thinking it's sort of encroaches on otherwise open play field mm -hmm. by having it there, you know, mm -hmm. sort of adjacent to the the east half of the what, the multi-purpose field and, mm -hmm. you know, are you just sort of diminishing the usefulness of the, of, the, actually, of as much open, you know, kind of open play, you know, play field area if you put it there versus where, I don't know where else. I've, there's trees right now. That basically run right here. Oh, so trees now. those trees so there weren't last time I are the edge of that field. <laughs> okay, all right. So, so it's, uh, it is on the other side. Okay. Side right. of it. Try not to encroach upon that. Open that okay. No, that's yeah. great. That's okay. Right. I, didn't, also, I didn't realize that. So important yeah. to understand. It's actually not a slack line, but slack line poles. So poles, it's a bring your yeah, own slack exactly. line. Right. So there won't so be the lines running yeah. in their own. Right. Thing. It's yeah. just poles, and then they come out at different distances, and whoever the user is brings out their own slack line and connects it to the pole and uses it, and then takes it with them. That's all the questions I had. Great. Thanks. One more. One did more. you did you have you thought about or addressed any more of the concerns that like, I don't know if Daryl brought it up about just making it more obvious that those poles are there so that right. so that people yeah. don't trip over them or run into them or you know just playing because they they don't stand up they're, you don't you don't want them up high because yeah. you don't want the slack lines to be put high. up high so they're right. they're kind of mm -hmm. low and and that's part of the detail we'll get into more but we had talked about. Um, a reflector tape or something on them yeah. mm -hmm. so that they are visible for whoever's running across there, especially in the evenings, you know, they don't see them. So we'll work out that details yeah. of safety. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Okay. Um, item five on the public hearing is actually a staff presentation. So I don't know if there's a, I think you've all presented. Is there any more from staff, really? 
in terms of a presentation. We're good. Okay. And questions of staff. I guess we've asked all those questions. I unless you have any. Uh, so item seven is the opportunity for anyone in the audience who wishes to come in, come forward and speak on behalf of the project or give your opinion or questions, comments. So if you'd like to come forward, it's your opportunity to do that. Seeing none, um, any final statements from the applicants, which I guess is still the town, so. <laughs> no? Good, good. Uh, then we will uh, close the public hearing and move on to dis any further discussion. Okay. Start on my right this time. Uh, nothing in particular, then I think it's a great looking project. Good work on putting this all together. Okay. Look, there's been a lot of thought put into this. Um, pretty good utilization of park space for the most part. Still I'm bothered by the east, eastern edge, which I understand why people in original town are anxious to keep that kind of soft in usage. But uh, I just think the budget might surprise you. I'll make that comment. Um, yeah, I'd just like to see the ball field be a little bit more accommodating to uh, and not arguing for for anything programmed, but uh, I know we used to just show up at fields with a team, and so I'd like it to be able to accommodate, being that there's such a lack of fields right now, today, and no telling when something else may come along, a little more accommodating to, to a team um, showing up and throwing their bags down and having a bench to sit on and, and running some type of practice. It's only going to be small kids. No, no bigger team is going to step on 60-foot bases with 185 feet to boulders and foul balls that are going off in the streets. So I think it's, it's already going to limit itself to a type of play, and I'd just like to see us accommodate it a little bit more. Um, and then uh, I'd like, you know, I'd love to see that boulder. I think we're lacking stuff in town for a certain age group to just go to a park and have something to do. I live right by Purple Park. It's, you know, it's all little kids. Uh, volleyball is very, very active. It's the one thing they do have. Um, the other basketball court uh, does get used. I don't see how many teenagers. I, I tend to see older kids using it and maybe smaller kids, but I don't see the teenage years. And adults. Yeah, I don't really see that high school age kid. And I'd love to have something more for a few high school or kids to do. I mean, that rock reminds me of a stone in, uh, in uh, outside of Park City or outside of Salt Lake that my son took me to that he wanted to climb. And there was a line of people waiting to climb just this piece of granite that was no taller than that and to try different routes on this rock. And, and I think it'd be great if we could find a way to do that. I'd be even in favor of eliminating a basketball court to do that because I do think it'd be a more important feature. So it's one good. I will say actually just in regard to the to the fee to the baseball field is that um, having a having a place of course to drop your equipment, all those things, but also to consider safety of foul ball for a kid who is sitting on a bench or something right. is you know, something definitely to consider. Um, with uh, I know because I coach um, softball, that there's a real shortage of fields available for softball use, and that, that the, the number of teams that's coming out of Superior right now is at an all-time high, actually, for, for girls' softball. And we're always looking for fields to use, and I suspect you'll see uh, girls playing on this field quite a bit, given that it has 60-foot base pads, and, and those girls can, can hit the ball over the fence if they're 11 or 12 years old, and they can they can knock it over that backstop and they can do some of those things. So just be aware of, of that. I, I, I foresee that. Um, and then I, I will make one other comment. I should have asked this as a question, but I'll just make it as a comment just for, is the, I love that we're putting in horseshoe pits too. We're just 
put, putting them as far away from the bathrooms as we possibly could. I mean, for us old guys that like to play horseshoes and drink, you know, drink beer or something. Um, well, you can. It depends what you put it in. <laughs> I'm just saying. No, it's they're they're just kind of out there by themselves, and you know, I, I know that there there are trees and things along there too, and, and I. I like the idea of using that the, the field. I mean, the whole park for different purposes, right? But uh, um, it's uh, I didn't mean that. <laughs> I didn't mean using the trees. I did not. I just meant there there are trees around the area, and I know that, that there's there's reasons why you put it over there, right? It's funny you guys thought of that. I didn't. Actually. That's really funny. No, oh, you mean serious. shade? No, okay. Yeah, shade. Um, anyway, just. They, they just seem like kind of outlier when you're talking about sort of a passive part of the park, and now you've put an active activity in that passive part of the park. So, to me, that just looks a little inconsistent. But beyond that, I think it's awesome. I, you know, obviously, been waiting for for th this thing has sort of matured over time, and to see it, um, you know, come to to a fruition like this is awesome. So, um, really cool. Thanks. Okay. I really appreciate the variety of of different activities that have been incorporated into the plan. I think it's it's a wonderful plan and it really kind of goes along the theme of the other parks that have been developed in town. It's, I, I hear a lot of comments that you know, we have the best dog park and best this park. And so it's, it's refreshing that a lot of thought goes into it. So I'm excited to use it. Thanks. Um, I, I think I just did a Many, much of what's been said, I, I, I do agree, John, that the horseshoe pits, I don't know if they were just closer to the basketball court, might make a little bit more sense. They do seem like they're just off down there in the corner, which seems a little odd. Um, I also like the idea of getting some benches. I hadn't really considered the safety issue, uh, being able to send a kid and say, go to the bench and sit down, you're behind the fence, um, and you're protected, and I think that's, that's extremely important. I also think, as I said earlier, that rock feature is, is critical. Don't think I'm at the point of giving up the basketball court for it, because I think that's a, an awesome feature for us. But um, but I do think that rock feature is pretty critical. Um, and I, yeah, you guys, this, this, you guys just did an awesome job. This, this is a beautiful park, and I think we're all very excited about it. I think staff did a good job. The staff and the designers have done a good job. I think it looks like there is something for everyone, and um, I'm hoping it looks as good as. When it's done, it looks as good as it does on paper. Mm -hmm. I have one other question that I meant to uh, ask and I forgot. Public hearing is closed. Yeah, no, I can't ask them a question just on, a, on the plan detail. Well, the attorneys so, will always say the public, public hearing is closed. So right. I, okay. if you want to reopen it, John. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, I mean, you can you can put it in the form of a comment. Yeah, and I just an I, I, I have a con, I have a concern is all, and my concern is that the uh, proximity of the, the table tennis concrete slab to the skateboard run. To me, it seems like it's like four or five feet. Just looking at the scale, I don't have the scale with me, but that seems I've seen what they do on those skateboards, and that seems like it might be a little little close. Jump into it. Get a teenager that's running down there fast and jumping off and or loses and takes a tumble right towards the table. So that I, I noticed that kind of concern. Where the rock boulder at the pit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the end anyway, that, that proximity and I hope it's been looked at and, and people feel it's far enough away. Okay. Good. Any other um, discussion? If not. Um, we, uh, I would entertain a, a motion. No, at this point, we are just recommending approval yeah, or making a recommendation with whatever comments you want to have yeah, along with that recommendation to the board of trustees. Um, yeah, possibly. Uh, was there anything in particular that we, in terms of recommendation, that we would want to straw poll right now prior to that that, that we feel strongly about? Well, The Rock, trying to make sure that, that, we, that we all think that that's pretty. Important element. Maybe the moving the horseshoe pits closer to the right, yeah. closer to the park. Mm -hmm. And then I'd say, then I'd say the benches I too. I had four from okay. the discussion. And the benches, the benches. I'm hey, seeing lots of head nods. Yeah, go, go, ahead, let's go down your list, and we'll. I have yeah. four like recommendations that 
to you know add benches to the ball field. That's sort of a generic thing for them to just design it. Can, can, yeah. Move the horseshoe pits closer to the basketball court. Rock feature is a critical element to keep in the design. And the proximity, check the proximity of the skateboard and uh, or the skateboarder's rails uh, and the table tennis table for safety. Mm -hmm. Yep. How's that? So that's good. I see all head nods. Yeah. Okay. 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 Just want to. All right. So struggle. Like much about you to no, I think we got lots of head nods. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'd like to move to approve a recommendation to proceed with the town nine park enhancement project and pass along the following comments uh, to the board um, as we were just read by Fred read that, that, read yeah. them one more time yeah read them one more time yep okay. add benches to the ball field and in in that's the designer's choice there but do that move the horseshoe pits closer to the basketball court rock feature is a critical element to keep if there's you know budget issues um, and check the proximity of the skateboard rails and the table tennis ping pong table uh, for safety. The proximity of those two features together. Isn't that what you said? Yeah. Well, what was three again? Sorry. Three. Rock, the rock feature. Was oh, the rock feature. The only, and the only other thing, too, was, Fred, if we could just add a fifth one, which would be the um, um, align the entrance, the south entrance, with the Remington development. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Got the distance between the end of the skateboard run and the rock feature. It's right at the end of the sidewalk. Or we could combine it into one and I say consi consider consider, yeah. consider the safety of the, the, the skateboarding into the teen area. To the, yeah. To the distances to the around the, the, mm -hmm. that rail, that yeah. skate rail. Right. As Probably depends on how fast you can get going down that hill. Too. Right. Yeah. Does, that, yeah. does that sound reasonable? Did you have another one? Six? Well, no, we just said we, we were just modifying the one about the, the, the proximity to the table, the skate rail. It's really just an overall more general comment about the safety right. distances, distances. around the, the skate, you know, the intention skate of having that skate rail skate close to other those other amenities right there in the team park. How's that? Let's modify that instead. How's that? Does that work? Yep. Okay, so those Good. are the, those those are are the five yep. uh, so, yeah. condition or recommendations, we'll say. Um, okay. Agreed. Mm -hmm. I have a motion. I have a second. Second. Second by Commissioner Folsom. Any further discussion? Okay. We'll go to a vote. All in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. It's unanimous. Okay. That uh, concludes the. Uh, Item uh, seven on the uh, item five on the agenda. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks for everyone's time too. As you know, we can always take a lot of time on our issues. So thank you very much. Um, and and thanks to ProStack and everything for and staff for all our work and putting a lot of stuff together. Those are things we, a lot of those amenities things we've talked about for a long time. So great. ten years. Yeah. yeah. Um, Item six staff announcements and miscellaneous. Uh, yeah, there's a couple. Let me see. Um, just in case you're curious, the, the board uh, is uh, talked about the green building standard and decided that they wanted to have a lot of the work session on it. A little bit more detail about how the numbers work and in terms of, you know, when we're going down to 45% and how the, how the as it goes, as he had modified it, as the building official had, uh, Ernie Kern had modified it, and so on. Um, and then also, I think they want a little more information about uh, some of the costs and as it relates to the way some of the other communities are doing it, dealing with this. So there was some of that information, but I think they wanted a little bit more. So they're going to continue to discuss that green building standard stuff that we all worked on here. Oh, a few weeks ago. That and <clears throat> just wanted to go over uh, a couple, some meetings that are popping up, and at least in May and in June, we probably have been looking at the schedules on the website or whatever. But the comp plan discussion, community workshop number one is this Thursday night. So there, 
So looking forward to talking about uh, getting impressions from people and getting that nailed down from anybody and everybody who shows up. So it would be nice to go to that. Um, then in the 23rd of May, at, and I think that I've been told this is now at 7 o'clock, not 6 o'clock. It is. There's that the uh, town center, uh, town board, and the peace planning commission, I mean, uh, have a get together to talk about the concept as it's evolved from the discussion we had uh, last month. That's on the 23rd, Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. On the 24th of May, we're going to have another meeting with Planning Commission of the Town Board it's the next night uh, to talk about the market analysis. So come with your numbers head on. Because I'm sure there will be quite a few of those thrown out. And, and, and uh, so that's the 24th. That would be at 6. Um, the one on this coming Thursday, the day after tomorrow is at 6. One on the 23rd is at 7. Okay. And then for June, um, and I'll just repeat these every time we have a meeting, but just to uh, keep you up to date here, the Planning Commission, we have a Compland community meeting on alternatives at 6 o'clock on the 21st. Okay? And then, in regards to the town center, the next week, uh, the week of the 25th, which is a Monday, we've got slew of meetings. We've got 26th at 6 o'clock is a neighborhood meeting regarding the town center, which is a, more of a community type meeting. And for them to get some more input into, into the town center material that you've been looking at. On the 28th, uh, not on the 27th, we have a staff meeting with them, but you don't need to go to that. Um, on the 28th, we do the comp plan where we're going to have the planning commission and the town board are going to look at the alternatives, the draft alternatives that the consultants are coming up with after our community meetings and stuff. So 26th and 28th and 21 of June. All of those are at 6 o'clock. So that's June. I won't go on with July, but, um, unless you're interested. Um, but we have two meetings, three meetings in July, two in the comp plan and one on the town center. Town center is 16th, uh, comp plan on the 19th, and the comp plan on the 30th, 16th, 19th, 30th of July. Um, so we've, we've, we've captured we've captured, captured all those two on the look ahead at this point, haven't we? Yes. Yeah, it's on the it'll be on the look ahead. Yep. Um, and at this point, you know, I, if there's changes, you'll we're, we'll have I will keep you informed of those if we have a meeting or something. You know, hopefully not. I mean, the idea is we're all supposed to stick to the schedule, and uh, I'm going to do our darnest to do it. And the consultants know that that's the, that's the marching orders also. So hopefully, hopefully these days will stay the same. So hope to see you on Thursday. That uh, should be interesting uh, as we get started on trying to get our issues, people's issues and concerns out on the table about these different other sites around here and how to deal with them and then the plan itself. So. Okay. Okay. Well, that's all I had. Good. Anything else from staff? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, good. That's it. Thank you.